So we've been posting some pictures of uh, flies using dubbing brushes and uh, I've built somewhat of a rudimentary design of a dubbing brush maker and we're going to work with a more of an expert craftsman to have some of these made for sale on our site but um, as you can see I've made some brushes these are craft fur brushes with flash either made from ice wing fiber or ice dub so this one's black with blue and uh, red this one is olive and black with gold this is brown and yellow with gold this is purple and orange with lavender and this one I think is chartreuse and pink with silverish stuff but anyway you can see they're nice and full you can get a lot of flies out of these so let me show you the machine so we've got this dubbing brush maker and essentially it's really simple it's got two hooks on one on the sides this hook is spring loaded so you know that comes in handy down the road when we're taking the dubbing brush off and then it's critical with these long brushes to have a table that that removes and I mean I could have spent some time and money creating a table that flips down um, but this is really simple I mean these are I'm no uh, woods worker woodworker as you can uh, obviously see this is much more about function than form and then um, I utilize just a this is a drill that I've had forever and I just took one of these hooks um, and screwed it into the drill and that's what I use to twist it up with now you can use a Dremel tool you can use a bunch of different things but that's what works for me so anyway um, without uh, delaying anymore we'll show you how to use it okay the first thing that we're gonna do here is you can see that I've got some little fuzzies going around on the on the table so the best way to do that is just take a some painters tape wrap it around your hand hand sticky side out I'm just gonna rub that on there you have to get all of them off but it helps to, to have it somewhat clean next I'm going to take this uni dubbing brush wire this is nine thousandths and I've got just a little key ring here so I'm going to just twist that around here a little bit to give it a little bit of a start and I'll stick that key ring here and then I'm going to go around this one now I'm going to kind of center up my wire in that gap for the most part it's not super critical and then I'll wrap this wire around this hook a few times and then I've got a little spring here that I put that will kind of manage that wire now the other thing I like to do, and this isn't necessary, but I don't want this to move at all when I'm putting fibers on, so I just take a wood clamp and I clamp it in place. Alright, so now that that's all squared up, I usually wouldn't move this out of the way, but for the sake of the video I will. And I'm going to show you how to work with craft for um, when you're uh, getting it ready for the loop. So I've seen lots of videos using craft fur and one of the things that I've seen is that people waste a ton of it. You know, craft fur is no mystery. It's it's not tapered hair at all. The way that it is on the pelt is it's got some really short fibers and some medium fibers and some long fibers and some really long fibers and that's how they get the kind of a taper and so we're going to use the majority of that but uh, the only hair we're going to really get rid of is about the first half inch worth of hair that's really really short so I've got my you know dubbing brush I guess it's like a dog slicker brush we also sell these on the site but this is the quickest way to remove that fur so I'm just going to come in here and it's it's critical to have some sharp scissors and if you if you come in here and you start cutting it almost all the way across the, the bottom of the hair like that then you can start just kind of gathering it up and kind of stacking it for the most part now 
what you can do is you can kind of take your hand and, and even up the butts there. But I'm going to grab it about right here and really push that into my, my uh, dubbing or our carding brush. So we've got it cleaned about like that. Now, it's, it's okay that our ends are not even like that, and that will make a perfect clump to lay down on the dubbing brush. But anyway, if you do it that way, you'll be able to, you know, really use every bit of your craft fur. I went through a lot of craft fur while I was trying to perfect this. So, anyway, I'm just going to set this aside. And as we actually put it on the table, we'll probably just put that into fast motion so you don't have to watch me do this a bunch of times. But I'll use roughly you know, a third to a half of this clump of craft fur for a brush. And that's one color. I'll do a third to a half of a, a, a pelt as well for, for the other color. So it is a pretty thick brush, um, but these, these uh, brushes will last quite a few flies, so it is worth it. Okay, so here's a little difference. Uh, we've got ice wing fiber in gold and we've got ice dub in red so the metallic ice dub colors like red blue steely silver gold uh, some of the pearls are this long and stringy fiber it's exactly the same material as ice wing fiber but these are cut into roughly two inch strips okay so the ice dub is ideal for putting in the brush um, so you can just take it right out of the package, lay it in the dubbing brush, and you're golden. Um, but um, ice wing fiber, there are quite quite a few more colors in this long stringy material that that I like to work with. So if you use ice wing fiber, I'll show you how to you know what's the best way to trim that up for a dubbing brush. So I'm just going to take a chunk of it out like this and I'm going to find some of the end fibers and I'm just going to pinch those on the table and pull those out and just repeat that until the fibers are more or less all facing the same direction. And if you're really anal you, know, you can do this twice with the same clump but it's good enough for me. And what we're going to build is a yellow and brown brush, so gold really goes well with it. Alright, so here we are. It's lined up pretty well for the most part, so I'm just going to grab it by the middle. And I'm going to cut it right in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to double that over. And then roughly in about two inch sections, I'll make more cuts. And as you can see, I've got this apron. I keep my scissors on a little zinger so that I don't drop them. My, my new rattle bass scissors. And this stuff is pretty slippery. So it will try to get everywhere. And it's okay if they aren't aligned after I cut it. Alright, so now I've just got a clump of dubbing, or a clump of flash, that I can use for my dubbing brush. Now, there are times where I will go ahead and just prepare the whole clump, the whole bag of dubbing, and then I'll just write with a marker on the front of it two inches, so that, it, that, that I know and I remember that I, I actually cut this. Alright, so now that you know how to trim the fibers for both the flash and the crapper will get started with putting it on this brush. Okay, so you notice that I did not put dubbing wax on the first piece of wire. I don't know that that's super critical. I actually will put dubbing wax on the piece that goes over the top and who knows I may change that as I make more of these brushes. So, But that's, that's just what seems to work for me. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clump and just kind of spread it out. And if you just lay it down, 
you can just move it with your fingers a bit. So that's about the length of craft fur you can get out of that. So you can see that there's quite a bit of overlap here. Again, all these craft fur fibers are the same diameter. So this will essentially make a, a brush like this where the core is more dense and the, the outside is a lot more sparse so when you wrap it on a hook you get a nice taper like this with our new ham bone pattern all right so i will just load this up with this color and then i'll do it with brown and then i'll show you how to do the flash So as you can see, I've got half of the craft fur for this, and this pelt, or this chunk, was brand new at the start of it. So, and I'm not saying you've got to do them this thick, but if you want to do these streamer brushes like I've been doing, you go through a lot of craft fur. Um, Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put brown on top of this, and then we'll do flash. Okay, I've got my brown in place. Now I'm going to take some of this flash that I just cut. And I'll just kind of pull some out and you lay it on top. And it doesn't matter if it's kind of messy or, or stuff like that because you'll be brushing it all out as you twist it up. I mean, you can lay it down nice and even if you want to, but it's just going to take you a, a lot more time to get your dubbing loop ready to twist or your dubbing brush. And if you find sparse sections, you can go back and just kind of put some more on top of it. Okay. We are ready to twist. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to take my super clean bottle or stick of low-tech wax from Loon and I'm going to try to screw this up. So I'm going to get roughly the amount of wire that I need here. And I'm going to just kind of touch that with the dubbing. Whoa. See what I did there? I kind of got, picked up some of that flash. So, I'll just replace it. Alright, so now so I'm going to stand up while I do this and just lay that over the top. Trim my wire, and then I'll kind of pinch that right here, and I'm going to go through my loop that I made, and then just wrap that around a few times. So basically it's pretty, pretty loose right now. Now the reason why we have this spring here is so that we can take the dubbing brush off of the spring or off of the table. Okay, there we go. So before I really lift it up, I'm going to put my drill in here and just start twisting it. And as I twist, I'll lift up a little bit. Okay? So once I have it lifted out there, I remove my table and now I'm ready to 
twist it up. And I don't think you should twist it super fast because the, the faster you you twist it, the more you're going to bind it down like this. So I'm going to keep it kind of tight. Then I'm going to come in here with my brush, my dubbing slicker brush, carding brush, and just give it a nice little preen. So you see, it's kind of cool. It looks like each color alternates like that. Which means we just need to twist it more. Some people say, well, your front section of the loop over here is twisting more than the back section. That's probably true, but it's not going to make a difference. So I'm just going to brush it out like this after every few times. Now you can see those color alternations are getting a lot tighter. And I can tell you right now because I bought a bunch of the craft fur wire, this this dubbing brush wire is a lot stronger than that stuff. So once I have it here, you can either twist it until it breaks, or you can just cut it off. And there you've got a really chunky dubbing brush.